Here's background just to make sure we're all in the same spot. I have a meter stick that's pivoting at the center of the meter stick. Um, and watch what happens if I put on just a paper clip. Unbalances because there's more mass on that side than this side. Now, not that that's terribly surprising. I just didn't think that one meter, one paper clip was going to make that big of a difference because it's only like two grams. But now let's go ahead and put 200 grams on either side and it balances. Now, just to point out, the whole background point, the point of this is that if it balances, the mass on that side and the mass on this side are equal distances and equal amounts. Now, okay, they, if they could be different amounts, but they'd be different distances. If the distances are the same, they're the same amount. Now, so here I've got a meter stick with a little piece of tape on it. That's going to be useful later on to find something. But anyway, notice that reads zero or very close to zero. Let me go ahead and tear it. There we go. I put this on and it reads 172.3. Now, I obviously did this beforehand. I have these little masses that I can change. There's that. And it turns out that's not exactly right. Watch this. 172.4. I'd say that's close enough because that's, that's within 0.1 gram. That's going to work out. So this weighs the same as this, all right? Remember, we talked about equal masses beforehand. Now, if I come down and hold on, I have to stop here, or maybe I can just turn this. So now I have a kind of a knife's edge is where I'm sorry that it's kind of up there. So I take this object and I try to find where it balances. Now we might say it should probably balance at 50. Let me put it at 50 and see if it balances. It does not. That side goes down, so the mass on that side is too far away. I bring it over a little bit. So right around 49 and a half. And I'm going to take this little piece of tape and I'm going to put it right there. That's the center of this object where the two sides balance. Okay. So now, let's see if I can get this where you can see. Actually, you should be able to see that pretty well. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my object that has the same mass. I'm going to wrap this around so that's there. Okay, so now, again, this object weighs the same as, this, as the bar. I'm going to take this bar, 49 and a half. I'm going to move it to that side 10 centimeters to 59 and a half. Well, notice it's going to fall, right? But if I go 10 centimeters over here, 69 and a half, and I put an equal mass there, they balance. That says that there must be the same mass on this side and this side, and they must be equal distances. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. Well, doesn't this have the same mass as the bar? That means the mass of the bar is concentrated at that point. Let's try, let's move it a little bit farther and see if that works. Okay, now I'm gonna move it over again to 20 centimeters away. There it is, I'm 20 centimeters away. And bring this out to 20 centimeters right there. And it balances once again. Let me go ahead and move this so you can see it better. Here we go. So notice that that one's 20 centimeters away and this one's 20 centimeters away. They have this mass is the same as the mass of the bar, as if the whole mass of the bar is concentrated at that point. Can I go even farther? I can't. I don't have any farther on the, the uh, bar to go because if I go farther out that direction, then this won't go any farther. Okay. So notice equal masses, equal distances which means the bar is concentrated at that point. Now, I've put a binder clip on the end of it, okay? So now this meter stick is no longer symmetrical. I put it on the scale, and it reads 80.4. Now, i got to make 80.4 with all my little masses. Obviously, I've done this before to not waste your time. 80.4. Throw a couple of these on here. I guess I'll do that later on when I have two hands. all sorts of junk. 
80.3. Once again, I'm going to say that's close enough, okay? So now let me put that together. So we now know that this weighs the same as this. They have the same amount of mass. But I have to find the center of mass of this one first. Now, I could put it on the knife edge, but the easiest way is to take my fingers. And I'm, not, I'm not thinking about this. I'm just moving them, and whichever side is heaviest or whichever side is farthest from the center of mass will be pushing down on my fingers more, and there'll be more friction. The other one will move. So since this one is moving, I know the center of mass is closer to the other finger. Now, once that one gets heavier, the center, the, that side is getting heavier. So now this finger moves. So it ends up being somewhere, here we go, somewhere around 44 or 45, because this is away from that point. So now I'm gonna find 45 or 46. No, 45, 45 it is, okay? Now I'm gonna put the uh, tape at 45. Now, just so that you can see this better, I can, I should be able to do this with one hand now. Maybe you can see it well from this vantage point. So here's our center of mass. All of it's concentrated at that point. I'm gonna move it over 10 centimeters that direction. So now there's, what was it, 80.3 or something like that. So that's 10 centimeters. I'm gonna take my really strange looking mass and I'm gonna go 10 centimeters on the other side at 65. And if I get it in the right spot, and if that doesn't move, so 65 is right about there. And there you go, 10 centimeters and 10 centimeters, they balance each other, which says that at that point, I know it's all spread out, all of the mass of the meter stick is all spread out, but it acts as if all of the mass is concentrated right there at the center of mass where it balances. Let's do 20 centimeters, just to prove it. Move it to 65, or very close to 65, so there would be 10, 20 centimeters right there. 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters and it balances. That proves that all of the mass of this object is right there. But we're going to prove it one more time using the moment of inertia device that we've used in the past to talk about moment arm. All right, here's our setup from uh, the, mo the proving moment arm lab. If you haven't seen that, you really should go see that first. So first thing I need to do is make sure that this is, is balanced, right? I have that little paper, uh, that little binder clip here. Notice that as I let it go, it doesn't move much. So this wheel is basically balanced. It's moving a little, but that's, that's as good as we're gonna get here. Uh, by the way, if you want these wheels, just call bicycle shops. They'll give you wheels that are all messed up because this one's pretty badly messed up right here. It's got, a, uh, it's got a, uh, a bend here and so forth. They'll get rid of them. I got like seven of them in one day. So every, every classroom should have these if you're doing AP service. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I need to attach this to the wheel because it's, an, it's not a symmetrical object, there is its center of mass. So let me do that. You don't need to watch me doing that. I've actually adjusted this now. <clears throat> I've put a bigger mass on it. When I did the lab with a lighter mass, it caused some problems. So let's see what we've got. So this right here is now 90.3 grams. And that's, so it's kind of falling. Maybe I'll get down here where you can see me, okay. So now I need to find its center of mass, which will no longer be there. Let's go ahead and find out where it actually is. I may have to move this in the room with that thing in the way. Take that off. right between the 58 and the 59. It's not balancing well, but I don't have this thing solid, I don't think. There, between the 58 and the 59, I'm gonna put the piece of tape there. That is our center of mass. Now I'm going to attach it to this uh, wheel. Let's move this over, hopefully you can see that. There we go. So now, these two uh, things are balancing each other. I'm looking through. Okay, so that's balanced. You can see when I let it go, it stays there. So now I'm going to put this. 
I want that to be off to the side and I may need to have to put some blue tape on it. Nope, seems to be holding. All right. So now, all of the mass is balanced down there. And if I look at my, if I look at my force scale over here, let me get to where you can see it. We have replaced our original uh, bar that we were balancing before with one that weighs 90.3 grams. Um, in order to do this calculation, we'll know that the torque caused by this object must equal the torque due to the spring scale. Um, as I measure here, let's measure the radius of the wheel. Um, this down here, right center, and to the bottom of the metal here to where the string is attached, I get 0.28 meters or 28 centimeters. Then over on the spring scale, uh, I read, looks like 1.2 newtons. Let me show that to you up close. 1.2 newtons. All right. So let's go through our numbers here. So we know that this mass, we had 90.3 grams, which converts to 0.9 uh, sorry, 0 0.09 kilograms multiply by G, and we're going to use G equals 10 because uh, we're, there's no way that we're better than 2% error. So that gives me a force down here, the force, which equals mg, equals 0.9 newtons. Now this right here we read to be 1.2 newtons, the tension, and we read the radius, I don't want to use that one, so here, the radius of the wheel equaled 0.28 meters. Now we should know that the torque of the string plus the torque of this mass would be equal, otherwise it would be rotating. So the torque of the string equals the torque of the mass. Torque is perpendicular distance times force. And here we have 0.28, the radius of the wheel, times 1.2 newtons equals whatever that distance is times 0.9. When we calculate this, we get 37.37 I get that to be 37.37 meters or 37 centimeters. Let's go find out. Let's go measure it. Now, so I measure from the axle out to the, me the, the object, and the object is at least actually 0.39, not, uh, not 0.37. So why is that? Now, I will tell you honestly, let me get back here where I can see you, or you can see me, I guess. Uh, I spent a very, very long time on this, trying to figure out what the issues are here, etc., and I couldn't, and I haven't actually figured it out. There's some sort of torque going on here that's very slight. However, when I run the numbers, it turns out that only 0.05 difference in force over here on that spring scale makes the difference. So where is it? I don't know exactly, but 0.05 newtons is really, really small. Do I think that all of this is, is good within 0.05 newtons? I don't think so. So that ends up being um, a very big difference. Okay, matter of fact, I have the numbers just over there. I may have this already recorded. Now, um, so let me go ahead and show you those and the final, uh, death, final explanations, etc. So it turns out that the numbers didn't work out perfectly, but we think that, that those numbers are within uh, experimental error. So what we just proved there was even though we had an extended object, that weird bar with a clip at the end of it, all of its mass was concentrated where we put that blue tape at the center of mass. And that allows us to do these kind of things. Next video. So when we're drawing things, you know, and for me, I always use Slim Jim, you know, whatever it is, Slim Jim or whatever object we're talking about. When we draw a force diagram, we literally just put a dot and we say, oh, look, there's MG, there's the normal force, etc." because we can treat an extended object as a point mass. Now let's go and do the last problem on the worksheet. So the last problem, okay, application. Uh, we have a 70 centimeter long 
500 gram bar is attached to a wheel, all right? That makes an angle of 30 degrees with a horizontal. The wheel has a radius of 25 centimeters. If the wheel is not moving, what is the tension in the string? Well, we know the tension in the string equals the tension of the bar. The bar is a symmetrical object, so this right here is its center of mass. So the force, mg, is gonna pull there and that mg will equal, so 500 grams, 0.5 kilograms, equals, we'll say, 5 newtons, all right? This is going to be 5 newtons, and this right here is going to be the moment arm. Now, if this is 70 centimeters, the center of mass is at 35 centimeters. Let's get a little bit more room here, so let's use this area up here so that we can see this well. I guess you can still see it from there. So we had our bar. Here's, that's not even much bigger, oh well. So here's 35 centimeters, here's 30 degrees, okay? And we want this distance, which is going to be 35 cosine of 30 degrees, which equals, a, so we have 35 cosine of 30 degrees, and that gives me 30.3 meters. All right. And so here we go. Torque of the string is going to equal torque of the, st sorry, the string here, torque of the bar. Torque of the string is going to be tension times the radius, which is 0.25. The bar is going to be the force of the bar, which is five newtons times the moment arm, which we just calculated point. That should be centimeters. Sorry. 0 0.303 centimeters. That gives me T to equal, so 5 times 0 0.303 divided by 0.25, and I get 6.06 .06 newtons, which I see right down there upside down. And that's how you use moment arm, sorry, moment arm and how you apply center of mass. For symmetrical objects, it's at the center. For non-symmetrical objects, you have to find the center of mass either by doing the balancing thing or by calculating it in other ways, which we'll show you.